Uh, shalom, y'all, my brother Apollos, with the disciples of the mountains of Israel, back with these righteous reactions, man. Been a little minute, but we back with it. And as you can see, we live with this thing, man. So, of course, like always, just letting y'all know, man, we're here to show y'all what's going on in the world that's outside of your household so you can be able to see the difference in righteous and wickedness. Because in your household, you're going to think everything going on in your house is righteous. But we're going to show you, according to the Bible, that majority of these households are ran wickedly. It's just what it is because this society is wicked as hell. And a lot of people just follow the trends of this society. So what we do at the Disciples of the Mountains of Israel, we bring out the truth and show you the difference between right and wrong. Why is that? Let's get that real quick. Let's start off with the script. Give me one second. Yeah, yeah, I got to get used to this old stream, y'all, too. So y'all be patient with me on this here. Let's go ahead and uh, pull this script up. All right, let's make sure y'all see this here. All right, cool. All right, so let's get Isaiah 8. Oh, Isaiah 5, not 8. Isaiah 5, verse 20. As it is, it says, Woe to them that call evil good and good evil, that put darkness for light and light for darkness, that put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. All right, this first part is part I want to focus on. Woe to them that call evil good and good evil. I mean, the things that the Lord said was good, they call it evil. Like, for instance, a man running his house, ruling his household having this woman in control, under his control. That's called evil in these days. And it's good for a woman to be uh, independent, bossy to her husband, tell her husband what she not gonna do and all that. That's, that's looked at as good today. What the Lord say, woe to them that call evil good and good evil. So our job is to bring you back to what God says is right. The difference between right and wrong again. All right, we got to get back to that in order to heal our house, because the only our house is being ran by the ways we were taught of the heathen. And let me get that real quick. This Proverbs chapter three. Let's see if we can get that up. Right, this Proverbs chapter three, verse thirty-one. It says. Envy thou not the oppressor. Make sure y'all can see this, please. It says, Envy thou not the oppressor and choose none of his ways. Not some of his ways. It says, Choose none. This word none is there for a reason, man. We got to understand the ways of the heathen are not of our God. Uh, he completely against the ways of this heathen. And that's what taught your household. That's what that's what you run in your household by, by the ways of the heathen. They taught you how to let your woman run over you. They taught you how to let your kids do whatever the hell they want to do and not whoop their behind. When the scripture tell you to whoop their behind, <clears throat> they taught you everything you know about households while you holding the Bible. That's the craziest part about it, but Sleep is sleep. When the Lord said he poured out a deep sleep on us, he was dead serious. And we can see that in all of the actions and the way we conduct ourselves as a people today, it's completely upside down from what the Lord said we're supposed to do. Why? Because we learned from the heathen that he told us exactly not to learn from. So let's get it in, man. We're going to get to a few of these reactions so y'all can see, man, because it's getting worse. Sadly, it's getting worse, man. I feel bad for my young brothers, but I pray that y'all listen and get some understanding so y'all can actually do this the right way and stop letting these wicked women in your household, man. Real talk. So let's get into it. Let's see if I can find this, John.
for everybody doing all right that's keeping God's commandments. And the wicked, hey, y'all getting y'all ass whooped. Y'all want to repent? That ass whooping ain't going to stop, man, just so y'all know. Uh, okay, I got to get out of here to get to it. Hold on one second. You don't raise your children the way we do. I mean, a nine-year-old boy in Gaza is more of a man than a 25-year-old in America. You prolong adolescence to an absurd degree. You don't prioritize maturity. But at the same time, you sexualize your children very early. I mean, you've got like hold third grade. On, hold on. I don't know if this thing is playing with the visual. One second. Let's make sure. Yeah. So that should be it. Yeah, that was good. That was looking good. Looking good. Oh, right, y'all check it out. You don't raise your children the way we do. I mean, a nine-year-old boy in Gaza is more of a man than a 25-year-old in America. You prolong adolescence to an absurd degree. You don't prioritize maturity. But at the same time, you sexualize your children very early. I mean, you've got like third graders twerking, you know, and singing explicit song lyrics. And then you put that on social media for everyone to see. You're teaching kindergartners about sex, masturbation, about homosexuality and transgenderism. You think that prepubescent children can decide to have their genitals removed before they even know what they're actually for. You put little girls in beauty contests and try to turn them into, you know, Miniature Beyonce's and Cardi B singing about WAP. 12% of 12-year-olds uh, in the U.S. are already sexually active at 12. And that's from a study 10 years ago. So you can expect that the percentage is even higher now. 6.5% of them had actually already engaged in anal sex by the age of 12. The majority of sex offenders in the West victimize children. And they say about 90% of uh, sexual assaults on children are never even reported. So imagine what the real numbers are. No, you have a pedophilia problem in the West. And no matter how much you wish you could, you can't shift that over to us. We're not going to help you justify your sickness. Islam does not approve of it. My baby didn't say nobody did be a crime. I don't care. Uh, I told you. Stop playing with me. They want to cut my baby. Go to the next one like that. All right. So let's get back to this first one. Quick. I want y'all to hear that. I'm going to go through it one more again so y'all can really hear and I'm going to touch on the key points. Let's get to it. You don't raise your children the way we do. Off the roof. <laughs> the way we raise our children is the problem. And again, it's because we're raising them the way this system said we're supposed to raise them. And he just showing just in the world, even people in the world know better than, most people in the world know better than Americans. America is the dumbest country on the planet. They do everything that's counter, what's the word? Uh, not counterintuitive. It's against everything that, what the hell they doing. It's going against themselves. They do everything that's, that's against their own self, like hurt their own self. Like something simple as you should know better than to let your daughter, let a, a, her little boyfriend come up or even let her have a little boyfriend at 12, 13 years old, you should know better than to let her have a little boyfriend. On top of that, you're going to invite the little nigga over for 
Thanksgiving and Christmas and all these worldly wicked ass holidays. When you know what they doing when you ain't watching. But again, this is the dumbest country. You know what I'm saying? It is just what it is. They're going to continue to prove that they're the dumbest country. You know, we're seeing it every day on the news, the, the way they're dealing with the rest of the world. But the way they taught you to deal with your household, it's like an absolute idiot. You are against your own self. You know what I'm saying? You are against the building of your household. You are for the destruction of your household. That's what I wanted to say earlier. America is about their own destruction. They destroy their own self. They don't need nobody come out, come in from the outside to touch on them. Because it, it eventually this place going to implode. It's going to blow up in itself because of how retarded the rules are here. So he said, first thing, y'all don't raise y'all children like we do. That's just what it is. That's the first problem right there. I mean, a nine-year-old boy in Gaza is more of a man than a 25-year-old in America. That's a damn shame. And it's true. A nine-year-old, I don't even know about Gaza, but let's go with the, the, uh, the state or the country that's right beneath us now, Mexico. A nine-year-old in Mexico know how to do stuff way better than a 25-year-old here in America. Why? Because they prolong the foolishness. They prolong you being like a little boy instead of teaching you how to be a man at an early age, teaching you how to work with tools, work with your hands, teaching you things, teaching you things that's going to benefit you later on in life. Instead, they teach you everything about children. They, they keep you in a childlike mentality. You know, at 18 years old, you should, you should know a lot as a man. But sad to say, man, most of our brothers don't even know how to use a screwdriver at 18 years old. Like, for real, for real. And y'all know what it is. A lot of our brothers don't even know how to change a tire at that time. They don't know how to do a lot of the things that a man is supposed to be able to do. And the reason is because the way we are raising our children, we're raising them like the heathen, like the Gentiles said to raise them, instead of raising them up like Christ said raise them. So we have to understand the righteous way to raise our children and the unrighteous way. You know, the, the wicked will spoil their children, but the righteous, let's see what the righteous do with their kids. Let's get Galatians 4. Let's see how we're supposed to raise up our children. Scriptures tell us everything, man. Right? Uh, this is a, uh, let's see if I can see it. Coming back to that. We coming back. Probably would have put both of them up on there. Don't know. So I really do. All right. So this Galatians 4. Hopefully y'all can see that. But Galatians 4 verse 1. Now I say that the heir as long as he is a child, the heir is the one that's going to have the throne next. Okay, The heir to the throne. The one that's going to be in charge of all your possessions, the ones you're passing everything down to. He's a little prince. But let's see how the Bible says we treat him. It say, now I say that the heir, as long as he is a child, differ nothing from a servant. Differ nothing from a servant. Though he be Lord of all, meaning he going to take over all this here. But the Lord telling us when they're children how to treat them. We're not supposed to make them into little spoiled brats. And that's what America teach you to do. Make your child into a spoiled brat where your child is no good to society. They're expecting everything. They think everything's supposed to be given to them because you gave every damn thing to them. You're supposed to be the example and show them how to be. But... The scriptures is clear. He say they differ nothing from a servant. I mean, they're supposed to be as a servant to you. That's why the scripture tell you uh, your parents, you're supposed to treat your parents as your masters. It's very important we understand this because we in a, we in a uh, era where we letting these women control the house and the women 
have no defense against the kids. The kids control these women. You best believe that. So because they got no defense against the kids, the children end up running the whole house. That means the household completely upside down from what God said. But again, if we would just do it the way God said do it, we see here, treat your child as a servant. What happens with servant? You give them commandments. They don't listen, you put something on their behind. That's how a servant is dealt with. And that's how your child's supposed to be dealt with. Like I said earlier, the Lord tell us to whoop their behind. But this society tell you, oh, no, you don't ever, ever for no reason do that. You put them in time out. Well, there ain't no time out in the scripture to tell you put something on their behind. That would tell you to do. And if not, hey, don't be surprised when your household ain't ran right, man. Don't be surprised when your children just all out of order doing what the hell they want to do. Because you choosing not to do what God said. Not to run your house the way he said run. Let's get back to it. You prolong adolescence to an absurd degree. You don't prioritize maturity. But at the same time, you sexualize your children very early. I mean, you've got very early. Like third graders twerking, you know, and singing explicit song lyrics, and then you put that on social media for everyone to see. You're That's the part right there. Y'all put it on social media, your damn self. You put your own child on social media doing whole shit. You put your child on there twerking, got a behind all in the air wearing half naked clothes, and you think it's cool. Why? Because this society tell you, hey, it's okay. Let her be a little chilly. Let her be a little dancer. Let her be this and that. But the Lord got instructions on how you're supposed to raise your family. You can't just raise them any old kind of way that you want to raise them. This is what happens when you do. You get them over-sexualized. Now, when they 9, 10 years old, they around there shaking their behind at school. And what, like he said, at the end of the video, you got a pedophilia problem. Where the pedophilia come from, you sexualizing the damn children too early. You got these children out here looking for the damn pedophiles and don't even know. They setting up whole, um, they, they're trying to lure the pedophile in and don't even realize. They setting up whole types of, of systems for pedophiles to come to. The cheerleading, the dance team shit, pedophiles is coming to that, just so y'all know. That's who in the stands. There's a lot of pedophiles in the stands watching your kids at gymnastics. Why? Because that's how they set it up. You come there, bring your kid in there, bring them naked, have them spread their legs all wide open for everybody. And y'all don't understand these pedophiles looking at them like they're women. So, yeah, you got a huge pedophilia problem. When you're dealing with devils, that's what you're going to have as well. So we got to understand the way to do it have to be according to the ways of the Lord. Teaching kindergartners about sex, masturbation, about homosexuality. If that don't tell you we're in an evil country, I don't know what can tell you. I don't know what's going to make you stop following the ways of this world. If you don't see right there in your face that you can't even send your child to school without them teaching them flat out evil, then you really don't care. You're just not really paying attention, your eyes closed to everything, because there's many signs for you to see. It's time to check out from this society. They wild. They straight on some satanic stuff. It's time to go ahead and serve God because now I see why it's needed for us to serve God. Before, you can't really see that because it was all mixed up together and everybody thought it was all good. The whole time, Satan was luring them in slowly, like the whole Miley Cyrus thing. They started off hand in Montana, turning into Miley Cyrus singing and all that. Full-blown hope, swinging on balls and shit all across the damn stage. Full-blown hope. But they got your daughters because your daughters loved her when she was Hannah Montana. So because they loved her, they turned her into their idol at that moment. Your ass was just here. Feeding all the Hannah Montana product. She got Hannah Montana every damn thing. Whole room full of Hannah Montana everywhere. Because that's what you gave her. 
you made her the idol of the child. So then once they lure your child in and they got them doing everything they want them to do, then they flip the switch. Same thing with uh Christina Aguilar. Started off all nice and, you know, homey and, you know, lovely and soft and all that, then turned into a full-blown hoe. Same thing with Beyonce. She started off all soft and, you know, church girl and all that. Now she full-blown devil. Full-blown out here. Wearing these little things that got all kind of horns all on her head, baphomets all on them. It's the same little church girl from back in the day, man. But what they done done is they lure you in. Once they get you in there, they're like, okay, now let's flip that switch. And now all the girls that's sitting there looking at her or looking up to her is going to flip that same switch and become the same thing, become the same hoes. So we are, again, this is why it's envy not the oppressor and choose none of his ways. Because if you're choosing their ways, you're going to think it's okay to send your daughter to a concert with Cardi B. You're going to think it's okay to send them there. You're going to think it's okay because, hey, that's what they ask, they ask to do. And I don't want to be a bad dad and say no. And you're out here looking crazy. Your daughter twerking and got Cardi B playing all day in the damn room. And you scared to even say something because you don't want to look like a bad father. You don't want to look like you don't care about your daughter. You don't want to look too controlling. Whole time, the Lord say you the Lord over that house. You actually responsible for their souls. Well, let's get that. Because a lot of people don't quite understand that. Let's get that. You are the one responsible for their soul. Let's get a uh, Hebrews 13. Uh, I'm gonna get quicker with this switch game, man. I'm gonna get quicker with the switch game. All right, cool. So it's the book of Hebrews, chapter 13, verse 17. Obey them that have the rule over you. We know the husband has the rule over the household. That's why I said, if you don't know how to rule his own house, how can he take care of the church of God? So he said, obey them that have the rule over you and submit yourselves for they watch for your souls. It's very important that you understand the head of the household is watching for the souls in the household. As they that must give an account that they may do it with joy and not with grief for that is unprofitable unto you. That's what the people that's under the household have to understand. But the man as the Lord of the house, he have to understand it's your job to watch for their souls. It's your job to make sure they're not doing something that's going to corrupt themselves. Let me get another one real quick in uh, 1 Corinthians 15. It's the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 33. It says, be not deceived. I mean, don't let these people lie to you. Don't let these people trick you. It say, evil communication corrupt good manner. Evil communications corrupt good manners. You can have all the good manners in the world, but if you just around evil communication all day, what it's going to do is destroy your good manners. It's going to corrupt them to where you don't have those good manners anymore. That's if you're speaking evil all day, if you're receiving the evil communication all day, at some point in time, it's going to corrupt the good in you. Like I tell you that Lot was vexed with the filthy conversation of the wicked. You have to understand this is a spiritual war. It's a spiritual fight. So we have to move like it's a spiritual thing. We got to understand words are spirit, like John 6 and 63 says. So the more we put negative words in us, we're putting negative spirits. 
we put in demonic spirits. The more we put, put good words, righteous words, we're putting holy words and holy spirit into us. That's how we stack and that's how we become mighty in the spirit, by stacking up God's words in us, continuously receiving God's words, reading God's word, and you become stronger and stronger in the spirit, stronger in your wisdom as well. But this shows in your actions. Let's get back to it. Evil communication corrupts good morals, man. So you being the Lord of the household, you got to stop the evil communication. You got to stop letting them think it's okay to just be a part of the world and just have all kinds of sin in your house. You got to stop it because you're the one that's going to be held responsible along with them as well, but you're going to be held responsible because you didn't do nothing to stop. You just let it happen. Lord ain't cool with that. Get back to it. Transgenderism. You think that prepubescent children can decide to have their genitals removed before they even know what they're actually for. They won't even let you vote before you 18, but they'll let a child tell you, I don't need my balls no more. Yeah, I understand where we at, man. You got to keep it real. You put little girls in beauty contests and try to turn them into, you know, miniature Beyonce's. Let's stop right there. He said you put little girls in beauty contests. All right? That's what we see a lot out here. And y'all think that that ain't doing nothing or doing no damage to them. You tripping. First of all, it's going to make a vain ass female. That's first. But secondly, she's going to think that it's okay to you know, put all this caked up makeup on and these so-called um, nice dresses on when really it'd be half naked stuff. Everything America do, they'd be half naked with it. Same thing with the beach and all that, the swimming pool. Everything is half naked. But you're going to let them think that it's okay to conduct themselves like that. And again, you're supposed to be watching for their souls. Very important. And Cardi B singing about WAP. 12% of 12-year-olds uh, in the U.S. are already sexually active at 12. And that's from a study 10 years ago. <clears throat> so you can expect that the percentage is even higher now. 6.5% of them had actually already engaged in anal sex by the age of 12. The majority of sex offenders in the West victimize children. And they say about 90% of uh, sexual assaults on children are never even reported. So imagine said, what the real numbers are. No, you have a pet. I said most of the people here, they victimize children. Why? Because they're the most vulnerable because they don't have nobody protecting them and helping them up here. They just letting them do whatever and say whatever. And like, oh, you're right because you, you know what's best for you. You know what you like. And that's what continuously destroys the next generation and the next generation. They don't tell kids what to do. We don't tell children what to do here. We let children think for themselves. Same way with the women. We don't tell women what to do here. We let women think for themselves. You go try that overseas somewhere. See how far it's going to get you. I feel your problem in the West. And no matter how much you wish you could, you can't shift that over to us. We're not going to help you justify your sickness. Islam does not approve of it. Oh, baby, so nobody did be a crime. Islam does not approve of it. All right? Guess what? Lord don't approve of it. Moving on to the next one. So what you got right here is a sister. Let me make sure this thing is good. Okay, cool. So what you got here is a sister cutting the baby's uh, was it beads on the head or whatever, because the brother, the father of the child, he had somebody else, probably a little female he was dealing with or whatever. He had her do the child's hair. So because of that, the mama said, oh, nah, ain't nobody going to do my baby hair. Ain't nobody, you ain't letting nobody touch my baby hair. She goes so far as to cutting the beads and cutting the hair of her own child to make a point. I want y'all to hear how prideful this damn girl is. My baby said nobody did be a crime. I don't care. I told you, stop playing with me. They want to cut my baby hair out of here. Look at that shit. That shit's sad. Hurt my baby feeling. Hey, 
that way. Cause you don't hurt the dead. You don't hurt my baby. I do my own girl help. I do my own girl help. My baby sat there for two hours. I do my own girl help. My baby sat there for two hours. Don't play with me. My baby sat there for two hours. My baby sat there for two hours. Y'all see what she did? She swung at the brother. Two hours. Brother say he sat there. She sat there for two hours getting her hair done. My baby said nobody. I don't respect. Two hours getting her hair done. Only for her mama to cut it out. Sisters, y'all got to cut this out. Y'all got to realize how crazy y'all looking in this world today, man. They didn't got y'all thinking y'all got all manner of control over a family. I was telling my brother the other day, it didn't it got to the point where women are in full control over who gets a family and who don't. Like I said before, man, before every man was able to have a family. It wasn't, oh, he too ugly. Oh, he too short. Oh, he ain't got enough money. It wasn't that. It was every man. And guess what? He went and purchased his woman. And she obeyed every single thing that he said. He didn't have to go in for he didn't have to go to a father's house and be like, hey, I'm gonna force her to do it. Nah. It was already understood. The father had his back. Like, oh, you get my wife, my um, my daughter, she gonna do everything you say. Why? Because he took pride in making sure that his daughter was prepared. He took pride in that. He knew that this was something that would represent him. So he took pride in making sure his daughter understood, hey, don't go over there embarrassing me. But now we're in the point where the women are now in control of families. Women are saying whether a man is worthy enough to have a family. He not this, he not that, so I'm just gonna take his kids. I, I know he, he thought he had a family, but it don't matter what the hell he thought because he ain't enough. He ain't fulfilling the things I need him to fulfill, which every sister, for some reason, got some excuse. And like I said before, none of these excuses is found in the Bible. So somebody right and somebody wrong. The thing is, God going to always be right. So these sisters is definitely wrong for taking these children from these men. And his brother being a father in his child's life. And this is how he get repaid, man. And he got to sit there and watch his daughter cry. And this is a woman that's doing this to him. He can easily stop her, but then she going to get more aggressive. Why? Because she don't understand that she's beneath him. So she going to get more aggressive and make take it to the next level and the next level. And he going to have to take it to the next level. And then everybody going to be looking at him like he wicked. Nobody give a damn what the woman do once she gets something put on her ass. It's just no matter what she did, it's her fault. I mean, it's his fault. Why? Because we're in an evil country. It don't matter what you do. This country is going to back the woman no matter what. Truth be told, God say the man can discipline his woman. No matter if you think so or not. You ain't going to find now scripture saying different. But let's get back to it. My baby said nobody did be crying. I don't care. I told you, stop playing with me. They want to cut my baby hair out of here. I don't care. Look at that shit. So did. That shit sad. Hurt my baby feeling. That way. Cause you don't hurt the dad. You hurt my baby. I don't care. I do my own girl help. My baby sat there for two hours. I do my own girl help. My baby sat there for two hours. Don't play with me. Stop. Two hours. Brethren, I'll get at y'all a little while, man. All right, so let's go to the next one. My baby, see nobody. I don't respect. Did you have a father? Yeah, y'all heard him. My baby, see nobody. I don't respect. Did you have a father that you respected? I didn't disrespect my father. He wasn't around. <laughs> <laughs> Emotional, damn it. That's what it is at the end of the day, man. A woman just clearly and easily says, I don't respect men. 
Well, he said, well, did you respect your father? Oh, no, nah, he wasn't even around. The math has been done. You found out the answer to the problem right there. If you don't respect the father, you can't respect the next stage, the next stage of your guidance, the next stage of your protection, the next stage of your life under the next man in your life. You can't possibly respect it. But let's get a scripture on that so we can prove that the power of the husband, I mean, the power of the uh, father was passed down to the husband. Let's get that. Let's get numbers 30. Numbers 30. Hold on. I wonder if y'all can see that. Hold on, y'all. Hold on. Nope. Okay. Second. Okay, cool. All right. All right, now this is about, again, how the, the power of the father was passed down to the husband once the husband takes control of the woman. All right, very important that y'all understand control. Yes, I said control. No, y'all don't like to hear. But if you got to obey and everything, that means he in control. All right? Play with God if you want to. All right, this is the book of Numbers, chapter 30, verse 1. And Moses spake unto the heads of the tribes concerning the children of Israel, saying, This is the thing which the Lord hath commanded. If a man vow a vow unto the Lord or swear an oath to bind his soul with the bond, he shall not break his word. He shall do according to all that proceeded out of his mouth. If a woman also vow a vow unto the Lord and bind herself by a bond, being in her father's house in her youth, and her father vow, and her father hear her vow, and her bond wherewith she hath bound her soul, and her father shall hold his peace at her, then all her vows shall stand. And every bond wherewith she had bound her soul shall stand. But if her father disallow her in the day that he hear it, not any of her vows or of her bonds wherewith she had bound her soul shall stand. And the Lord shall forgive her because her father disallowed her. That's the power of a father. He got the power to stop a crazy prayer or a crazy saying to the Lord, or a crazy vow to the Lord that his daughter that his daughter is saying. So let's get the husband. Verse six. And if she at all have a husband, when she vowed or uh, or uttered aught out of her lips, wherewith she bound her soul, and her husband heard it, and held his peace at her in the day that he heard it. Then her vows shall stand, and all her bonds were which she bound her soul shall stand. But if her husband disallowed her on the day that he heard it, then he shall make her vow which she vowed, and that which she uttered with her lips, wherewith she bound her soul, of none effect, and the Lord shall forgive her. But every vow of a widow and of the divorced, wherewith they have bound their vow, where with they have bound their souls shall stand against her. And that's the reason why it's important for you to have a head over you, okay? You so-called divorce or so-called widow, and you don't have a man over you, yeah, you can make very stupid decisions and the Lord gonna hold you to those decisions. You don't have a man to say, hey, you was wild, man. Don't, don't, don't say that to the Lord, man. It's not, how you, it's not how you handle the Lord. That's not what you asked for. 
And that's just the wise counsel that the man was given. Men were made lords over women for a reason because they know better. As simple as that, they know better. They know and they can tell you the difference between right and wrong better. Why? Because that's how God set it up. America wants you to think they're equal. It just ain't going to change, man. It just ain't going to change. So we have to understand. Let's go back to verse eight. But if her husband disallowed her on the day he heard it, then he shall make her vow which she had vowed and that which she uttered with her lips, wherewith she had bound her soul, wherewith she bound her soul of none effect, and the Lord shall forgive her. Women, you have to understand, if you didn't respect the power of the husband, of the Lord, of the father, you did not respect the power of your father, and you didn't have a respectable father or a father that was there, you can't possibly understand the power of your Lord, your husband. So a lot of times you're going to not understand, you're going to be disrespectful because you don't quite get it. You didn't have that. You don't understand. So that's why we said emotional damage. That's just what it is at the end of the day. It's emotional damage. Man. <clears throat> Get back to it real quick. I don't respect Did you have a father that you respected? I didn't disrespect my father. He wasn't around. <laughs> okay, so that's the thing. So stop it there, right? You yes. didn't yep. even have the prime example of what you needed to carry your love for men in your later ages. Your father wasn't there to instill certain traits in you so you will accept a man's love. God's love comes through the father. So since you don't really know how to experience and digest a father's love, that means that you don't really know how to experience and take God's love because that's where the love trickles down from, right? The father's love is much differently than the mother's love. Yeah, the mother's yeah, love is that. more of a coddled love. You fall down, you get back up. Oh, baby, you, it's okay. You fall down, you get back up. Oh, baby, it's okay. To the point when you've fallen down so much, the father's like, stop falling. Right. <laughs> what are you doing? The but out. the father would tell okay. you that the first time. Right. What, why are you tripping and falling? Get up. Yeah. Oh, my God. God. My dad that did that to you. The father's love is a disciplinary yes. love. God's love is discipline. disciplinary. Think about it. Yeah. God wants you to repent before you go to heaven. That means that I love tell me what you did wrong <laughs> and day. repent your sins right. and then you'll get to the promised mm -hmm. land. But if you don't repent, forget you. You're not going and here. that's that father's uh, love. If you're not changing your behaviors, then hey, get out of here. Is a man less of a man if he I don't respect Did you have a father that you respected? I didn't disrespect uh, First of all, let's tap that one more time How can you not respect something that is stronger faster, quicker and can do everything better than you Obviously you've been trained and taught that it's okay to not respect because you respect lions, you respect bears, you respect things that are stronger than you and faster than you and that could take you over. You respect these things. But here in America, of course, it's taught to not respect men. And as I was saying before, if you don't have a father, you damn sure don't got no way to see a positive male influence in your life. Because everybody else is trying to smash. So you don't have nobody that actually cares about you enough to tell you when you're right or wrong and to give you an opportunity to be normal in society. Instead, you go out here, I don't respect men. Come on now. Let's get that. Come on now, dog. <laughs> Come on, man. And that's what it is, man. How are you just going to say you don't respect men? Anything with a penis, I don't respect. That's what that sounds like. And that's crazy. My father, he wasn't around. <laughs> okay, so that's the thing. So stop it there, right? Yes. You didn't yep. even have the prime example of what you needed to carry your love for men in your later ages. Your father wasn't there to instill certain traits in you, so you will accept a man's love. God's love comes through the father. So since you don't 
really know how to experience and digest the Father's love. That means that you don't really know how to experience and take God's love because that's where the love trickles down from, right? The Father's love is much differently than the mother's love. Yeah, the mother's yeah, love is that. more of a coddled love. You fall down, you get back up. Oh, baby, you, it's okay. You fall down, you get back up. Oh, baby, it's okay. To the point when you've fallen down so much, the father's like, stop falling. Right. <laughs> what are you doing? The but out. the father would tell okay. me that the first time. Right. Why, why are you tripping and falling? Get up. Yeah. Oh, my God. My dad did that to you. The father's love is a disciplinary yes. love. God's love is discipline. Discipline. disciplinary. Very important to understand that the Lord got rules and then he got disciplined for when you break his rules. We have to understand that as when the Lord say, treat your wives as Christ treat the church. He don't let us just run around, do the, whatever we want to do without no discipline. Only way he do that is if he don't love us. If he don't love us, oh yeah, you ain't going to get no discipline. You can go have fun in the world, do what you got to do. Your ass going to chain slavery when Christ return. But if he love you, he going to discipline you. He tell you straight up, when you come to serve him, prepare your soul for temptation. Why? Because you're going to go through it. The Lord going to try your spirit. He's going to see if you're really a bottom. And if you show you really a bottom, he's going to discipline you. He's going to get you right back on the right path. But our Lord is a disciplinary Lord. He's not there's no softy, no pushover. Somebody you can just say and do whatever you want. Think about it. God wants you to reap. Repent before you go to heaven. That means that I love tell me what you did wrong Every and day. repent your sins right. and then you'll get to the promised land. But if you don't repent, forget you. A lot of people say they repent every day. You shouldn't have to repent every day. I mean, that means you just in sin every day. You live in this sin and you're playing with God saying, well, I'm going to just repent every time I do the sin. No, that's not how this works, man. You're playing with it. You're playing with the most intelligent being on the planet, in the universe. You think that he's stupid enough to still allow you salvation while you just living whatever life and just saying, I repent every day. I don't know who taught y'all that God was a joke. But he is not stupid. He's far from that. Again, the most intelligent being in the universe, the one that created the universe. Understand that, man. Very important. You're not going and here. that's that father's uh, love. If you're not changing your behaviors, then hey, get out of here. Is a man less of a man if he can't change a flat tire? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Is a woman less of a woman? Yeah, that's what we were talking about earlier about changing the tire. Dog. A man is supposed to be able to do regular man stuff. You know what I'm saying? He don't got to have be a part of every single trait, but just regular stuff, man. You know, the, the door knob loose, let me screw that mug again a little bit, make it tighter. You know what I'm saying? The cabinet loose, let me screw it in a little bit, make it tighter. You shouldn't have to call a man for every damn thing. But again, like uh, old buddy was saying at the beginning, we raise our children wrong here in the West. And that's the reason why they don't know how to change a flat tire. But that's not what this one is about. It's about the hypocrisy of these women. Let's hear what it say. Is a man less of a man if he can't change a flat tire? Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. Is a woman less of a woman if she can't cook a meal from scratch? We're boys. We're women. No, that's not a good answer. Oh, that was the truth. <laughs> she said, oh, no, that's not a good answer. You can't say that one. We don't say it out loud. We keep that inside and tell them some lies that make it sound good. No, she told the truth. Do you believe we're in a transitional phase between women being old-fashioned and being independent? Yes, we're already there. If so, what are we transitioning to? Feminism. So he said between women being old-fashioned and being independent. What is old-fashioned? Old-fashioned is obedient and submissive. That's what being old-fashioned is. That's what the old-fashioned woman used to do. Let's get that real quick. Let's get that real quick. The old-fashioned. They, you know, a lot of people be like, what is traditional? Why are they always saying that? Traditional is the way it used to be. Let's get that real quick. The old fashioned. First Peter three. I was ready to go. All right, this is the book of First Peter, chapter three, verse five. For after this manner, in the old time. The holy women also 
who trusted in God, adorned themselves, being in subjection unto their own husbands. So this is what the old traditional way was. The old traditional way was all the women were just in subject. To, they were subject to their husband. They did whatever he said. And it wasn't looked at as she's being oppressed and she has the worst life. All this craziness that these women tried to put on women that was alive back then. Try to make it seem like they were living the worst life. But if you was actually be able to talk to these women, they would appreciate the lifestyles that they had. It's just these women today have been given so many freedoms that they think that anything close to the way the old women used to act is uh, oppression. <clears throat> but again, it says you're supposed to be subject to him. This is why we got to trust the Bible over anything we hear, because it's completely different from what's normal today in society. Verse five again, for after this manner in the old time did the holy women also, in the old time, the holy women also who trusted in God adorned themselves, being in subjection unto their own husbands, even as Sarah obeyed Abraham. So in case you don't know what subjection is, he's telling you it's them being in obedience to their husband, calling him Lord. What does the word Lord mean? Matter of fact, let's get it. Let's see what this word Lord mean right here. We see it right here. Let's see, why would she call him that? Because everybody know the Lord, you know what I'm saying? The one that's in charge of us. So why would she call him Lord? Well, let's find out. Let's find out. It says, Lord, the word was used 667 times as, I'm sorry, it was used, where is this top one? Oh, 748 times, and then used as Lord 667 times, used as lowercase Lord 54 times, Master 11 times, and Sir six times and another six times, all right? This word, sir or lord and master, they are all the same word in the Greek and also in the Hebrew. They are the same word together as one word. So what I mean by that is you'll see the, you'll see the word a whole bunch. Like I said, all these times, but this is just the same word, kyrios. This word right here. You'll see it in the Greek writings of this New Testament that we're reading. You'll just see that word. But then when we get to the English, you'll see well, sometimes it'll say sir, sometimes it'll say master, and sometimes it'll say Lord, all right? Because it's all the same thing. That's the reason why you're not supposed to say yes, sir, to people that are not your Lord, all right? Remember Christ said, call nobody master, for one is your master, even Christ, and all ye are brethren. So if you do it, it's called a sin, man. Right? That's what they call A sin is sin, sin. All right? So let's go back. It says, calling them Lord, whose daughters ye are, as long as you do well, and are not afraid with any amazement. You can't be afraid to do this, sir. You can't be like, oh, now nah, too many people going to look at me crazy and think something wrong with me. And I'll... You can't have that type of mentality, man. You got to have the mentality of, look, God say I'm supposed to do it? Oh, yeah, that's what I'm doing. I ain't trying to hit nothing y'all talking about. I'm doing what God say. And once you get in that mentality, man, it's going to help you. It's going to help you grow. It's going to help you get closer to God. Because we know everybody out here say they know God. Everybody say they love him. But what does the Bible say? Let's get it. First John 2. It's the book of First John chapter 2, verse 3. It says, and hereby we do know that we know him. If we keep his commandments. So it's giving us the, the pamphlet. It's giving us the manual. It's giving us the way to know if somebody know God. He said, if we keep his commandments. He that said, I know him and keep it not his commandments is a liar. A whole lie. All right. That's what the Lord said. He said, if, you, if somebody come around, you talking about, oh, no, nah, we don't got to do that no more. The law's done away with. The Lord said they a lie. Because he said, think not that I come to destroy the law. So he's telling us in order for us to have that relationship with him, man, we got to be doing what he said. 
We have to be obeying him. Let me say, ye are my friends, if ye do whatsoever I command you. John 15 and 14. It's a reason why he's saying this over and over. And the world is saying different. It's because the world was going to change like he said it was going to change. We got to get back to trusting him. Let's see if this will go back up. Okay, got to take this off. I hope we're tra transitioning to women and men being equal. We're transitioning in. They don't want man and woman to be equal. They just say that. Okay? That nobody wants man and woman to be equal. Because the women's job is going to get a whole lot harder. They're going to do a lot more things, a lot more is going to be expected of them which we're going to see one of the things later on in this video. To a lot of women being cat ladies. <laughs> Do you think a woman would be welcomed at a woman's march if she's pro-life or has traditional values? Nope. So do feminists really care not about nowadays. all women or just the women who agree with them? Feminists do not care about women. So is it really about women's choice? No, because it's not allowing each individual woman to decide for herself. It's not respecting each individual woman. And that's what y'all really got to understand that's, that they you know, signed over and co-signed this feminism. They really don't give a damn about you. They just want you to be rebellious to your husband and rebellious to anything God did. That's what they care about. If it was really about the woman's choice, it should be women should be able to be in the woman's march. They're saying, yeah, we're going to obey our husbands. We're going to do what they say. We're going to be submissive and feminine. Nah, they're going to kick them up out of there because that's not part of the agenda that they under. It's conforming to a propaganda. Yeah, that's what it is. Conforming to the propaganda. Yeah, man, this is an evil world we in. We have to understand that, accept it, so we can push away from the evil. We can't push away from it if we still think it's straight, right? Everything cool. We just accepting it and feeding it right to our children. Real quick, I won't take up too much time out of your day, but like, why are we drafting women for war? Okay. And this is what I mean by we're gonna find out in this video that women really don't want equality. You don't want equality, man. At the end of the day, the reason why men were able to vote only back in the day in this country right here. The only reason why it was like that is because women weren't able to get out there and actually fight in the war. So they was like, well, why the hell are we letting them vote? They ain't got no say so in this. They ain't going to get out there and do nothing. And that's because they are supposed to be a part of a household. It's not supposed to be them individual, them separate from their husbands. Oh, I got to vote and my husband got to vote. Now, nah, that's not how it works. It's that one vote of that house, of the head of the house. You don't have a say so. Best thing you could do is try to make your case to him but at the end of the day you don't have to say so because he is the one in charge he is the head the lord the ruler of the house again women don't want equality all right because then you're gonna have to start doing a lot of the stuff that a lot of simps and men that don't have no understanding of their value they're doing for you right now like paying your bills get sending you money just for no, no reason just for putting on a bunch of makeup and, and, and some tight ass clothes because for as many times that I go to court and I hear a baby daddy say, I can't find a job, I'm unemployed. <laughs> like Mr. President, Joe, drop. A baby daddy. People that talk like this just make me wonder, what, like, where are you getting this type of talk from? A baby daddy. That's like a baby mama. That's a, an American invention, all right? There's no such thing as a baby daddy. It's a child's father. It's a child's mother. But y'all say these words like it's a, a it's an invention. It's literally a thing. Every time I hear a baby daddy, you know, that's not how you talk. That's not how regular people talk. And we don't even realize it because, again, that's what America teach you to say and, and think like. But obviously she got some type of issues with her child's father. And that's the reason why she feel like, oh, they need to go over there. They ain't doing nothing over here anyway.
Again, this is the same type of woman that'll try to act like she want equality in another realm or in another issue. But when it comes to actually having full equality, oh, no, nah, why are we doing this here? The baby daddy's for war, okay? They're not doing anything else with their day. Might as well go fight for our country since they're not fighting for their families. Anyways, single mom attorney for president, y'all. Single mom attorney for president. These are the nightmares that brothers got to deal with out here, man. Like I always say, women will come up with every excuse to leave their husband. The problem is not one of those excuses is found in your Bible. So you can keep on coming up with the excuse. Just know you ain't sin. You ain't done nothing righteous by leaving them. You did sin. And you still in sin if you're still away from your child's father or your husband. At the end of the day. Let's go to the next one. I'm a whore. I'm not a whore because I chose to or because I wanted to be a whore. If you niggas I'll be the one that wanna fuck me. Y'all be the one that approach me with the gifts and the trips and the this and the that. Yeah, I have the option to turn it down, but why? <laughs> Who doesn't want you <laughs> Like, if y'all niggas wasn't so thirsty, then maybe I wouldn't be. Cocaine is a hell of a drug. <laughs> she really gonna try to blame men for her being a hoe. Let me get a scripture real quick. Get that off the screen. Get that off the screen. I'll be patient with me, man. Be patient. All right, this is the book of Ecclesiastes, Ecclesiastes, chapter 12, verse 13. It says, let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. This is the whole purpose we hear is to fear God and keep his commandments. Verse 14, for God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. So at the end of the day, all of your works are going to be brought into judgment. You're not going to be able to say, well, such and such made me do it. The Lord said your works going to be brought into judgment, whether it be good or whether it be evil. So you can't try to blame somebody. It don't matter who you blame, but your works going to be brought into judgment. You best believe that. You ain't finna get away with it, man. You is not finna get away. If niggas stop buying pussy, bitches will stop telling it. Stop blaming us for being whores. Blame these niggas that like to pay us. It's y'all fault. The next time someone comments on my page and tells me stop being a hoe, bitch, don't tell me to stop being a hoe. Tell these niggas stop being tricked. How did it don't make sense? First of the month, better pay. Yeah, so we know Deuteronomy 23 and 17 tell you there should be no whores of the daughters of Zion. But we also got to remember where we at. As far as in the world today, we are in Babylon, the mother of harlots, the mother of hoes. So you understand. This is the place where they breed whores. This is why they have your child as a whore at a young age, dressing with the little clothes on, going to the little dance uh, recitals and all that, half naked, coming out to the pool, half naked, going to the beach, half naked. Everything is half naked and it's okay. Why? Because this is the place of whoredom. This is, again, like I said before, this is the reason why women come from all over the earth to be whores here. Why? Because they protect these women 
in their hoarding. Because truth be told, they're not supposed to have no protection in their hoarding. Why? Because there's no man over them. So they out there just doing whatever and just being hoes. But at some point in time, a man going to snatch their little behind up. But America, the way America got it set up, you got them three little numbers you can call at any time. And now our sisters think it's okay to just do whatever and be free and wild and feel like America going to protect them. It's wild, man. But truth be told, man, you're going to pay for your actions. You're going to pay for the things that you thought was okay to do when God told you and showed you clearly it ain't cool. Go to the next one. Always make a way. I feel like I'm not gonna work my hands to the to the bones to provide. I'm not gonna work 16 to 20 hours a day or a week to provide for my family. You're the man. You have the penis. Go get a job. Get three jobs. My man has two jobs. Go get seven jobs and two side hustles to buy me the things that I want. Family, you're the man, you have the penis, go get a job, get three jobs. My man has two jobs. Go get seven jobs and two side hustles to buy me the things that I want because I'm a woman. Heard. Because she's a woman. Let's get that real quick. This is so crazy. Let's get that out. Because she's a woman. Women have forgotten that they are servants too in America. We're going to remind them, though. Let's believe it. All right, so let's get Isaiah chapter 4. Buy me, buy me, buy me. Let's see what God says. We do Okay, cool. All right, this is the book of Isaiah, chapter 4, verse 1. And in that day, seven women shall take hold of one man. This is a future prophecy. Clearly, this is not talking about the kingdom. We will see why, because they won't have to have these things. Their man will be in power, be able to take care of everything. But let's see what happens while we're in captivity. Tell you, and in that day, seven women shall take hold of one man, saying, We will eat our own bread and wear our own apparel. I mean, they're gonna buy their own food and clothing. Only let us be called by thy name to take away our reproach. We have to understand, man, the ways of this world is evil as hell. All right? These women want everything from you without giving absolutely nothing to you. That's the craziness of what we're in right now. But the Lord said that they would, they would come to us and say, we'll eat our own bread and wear our own apparel. Only let us be called by thy name to take away our reproach, meaning the reproach of being a single woman. Because your behind not supposed to be single. You weren't created to be single. You was created to have a Lord over you. So tell you clearly, they telling you we're going to eat our own bread with our own apparel in this time. For the people that, you know, can't get away from, let's get it real quick. Exodus 21. Exodus 21, verse, uh, which one did I? There we go. Verse 10. Exodus 21, verse 10. Exodus 21, verse 10. If he take him another wife, her food, her raiment, and duty of marriage shall he not diminish. Why? Because he was in control of it. Because we were in control at the time. We had power at the time. We had possessions. We had things that we was able to use 
sale or we had businesses. We had different things where we were able to take care of these women. Now, we just seen in Isaiah chapter four, he said in this time, they're going to be like, look, I'll, do, I'll take care of myself. I just need to be called by your name, meaning I need to be yours, be your possession to take away the reproach. All right. We have to go according to the scriptures. I know y'all want brothers be out here working their fingers to the bone. But at some point in time, you got to understand you are his servant. So if he working that hard, how hard are you working? Or are you just leaving it all to him because you think he the one supposed to be providing everything for you? Yeah, that's why you need these scriptures in your life, man. These scriptures ain't going to lie to you. America going to keep on lying to you. Let's get back to it. Got to be a faster way to get back to the videos. Let's check it out. Man, y'all know why the vibe be so some of the black clubs, man. We really be in there trying to have a good time listening to 30 straight serial killer songs. Like, we really in there trying to have a good time to murder music. Murder music of your own. Not murdering somebody else. Not going to war against your enemies. Nah, he's talking about killing your own people. That's what we listen to. That's what we prefer as a people. To murder music. What we in there hypnotized. We damn near all done lost somebody to violence. That's why we all in there on the verge of socking some shit. We keep listening to serial killer music. These young mad ass niggas talk about hitting somebody with a switch. Man, 30 clip, slide, slide, slide. Man, we in there drunk. We really hypnotized listening to this devil ass shit. I ain't gonna lie, like, I don't like some of the music, but it'd be like, man, how? Man, I love to hear a brother just say it flat out. This is devil shit going on. This is evil. This is wickedness. I love to hear a brother in the world actually realize that this is evil because that's how I came out the world. When I realized the music industry that I was trying to be a part of was evil as hell, I'm talking about people worshiping the devil all over it. That's what made me realize, hey, I got to come. I got to actually do, I can't just be going to church every Sunday because I was going to church like a mug. But the problem was I wasn't doing it according to the way God said do it. And I realized the same people I was going to church with that's in the music industry right now, same people that I was going to church with is the same people worshiping the devil. Well-known people, all right? Same people. Just so you know, they'll play that facade and be in that church and then turn around and be right there in their little temple playing, praying, and worshiping the devil. You know what I'm saying? It just is what it is, man. We can't just ignore the fact that the people that's making the music is worshiping the devil. And that's the reason why the music is devilish and wicked. This is the reason why they pay our people. Think about it. They don't give our people nothing. They don't give our people nothing. But they are giving millions to certain of our people. And it's because they will push the agenda. That's why I said before, it's plenty good musicians within our people. We're musical people. But what they have, what we call the so-called celebrities and musicians today, these is only the ones that would sell their soul. These is the the group that would allow, would allow themselves to be used for evil. So you have a lot of good musicians. Like you can see a lot of them in the truth, man. We got um, John Boyd. Uh, we got Imanan Yashala. We got Ariada Jew. We got many good brothers that know how to make good music. The problem is they won't be in the industry because they're not going to sell their soul. So when we looking at you know all this basketball wives and listening to all this music and stuff, we gotta understand what we're looking at. People that was willing to sell their soul. And we gotta stop being entertained by people that's willing to sell their soul. Because then when you listen to the music in the car with your child, now your child is getting more programmed. Now your child is looking up to this person, like, oh, this is what daddy listened to. This is what mama watched, so I she must be something I need to look up to. Whole time, these people are being paid to teach the children and teach you wickedness. As we partying, 
trying to have a good time listening to murder music. This shit is psychopath shit, for real. Like, I mean, the thing we gotta start switching it up, man. Something gotta change, cause that shit is really like. Like I said, man, I'm, I'm so happy to hear brothers make that connection because I know it's possible for that next step to happen, man. You have to realize that this world is evil in order for you to search for the good and search for what's righteous. Because then once you start searching, you'll see, okay, well, these churches ain't it. Damn sure ain't it. They out of there. They're not doing nothing God said. I remember uh, my crazy ass actually went to Joe Osteen Church when I was in the world. A few times, just because a sister that I was with like going to the church. But the Lord put me in that situation so I can learn as well. Because one of the days, Joe Osteen had the audacity to ask the church for more money. This white boy got the biggest church in the world. And he ended up asking for more money, talking about he going to add on to more parts of the church. Nigga, you in a basketball stadium. Like, what more do you need to add on Inside of a basketball stadium, a basketball arena. But again, I had to see that so I can understand even at the tip top, the ones that look like they got it all together. These people satanic and wicked as hell. They don't give a damn about God. I had to see that. And I saw that the day when he said he needed more money. He needed them to donate more money. You got thousands of people in this church that donate every week. You got a whole bookstore upstairs that everybody flock to after the church service. Everybody in the bookstore buying your books. You got the audacity to say you want some more money. I was like, did he just really just ask us for some more money? And again, I'm in the world at this time. So I'm like, what is really going on here? Like, how is this possible a man of God got all of this and he's still trying to bleed the church or bleed the people for more? And then I go outside that very day and I see what you call the manhole covers or the sewer. Well, you know, you go down in the sewer and, you know, take care of uh, the issues. The manhole covers, the circular manhole covers was engraved with the Lakewood logo. The Lakewood Church logo was engraved on the damn manhole cover. You know how expensive that is? And it wasn't just one. All of the manhole covers around there was Lakewood Church manhole covers in gray. First of all, you don't have to do that. But when you do it, you're saying, shit, we got it. Why they got it? Because they didn't deceive all the people and they're steady asking for money every time. So that was my wake up call as far as in the church, understanding that the church was wicked as hell. But again, I thank the Lord for putting me through that so I can see the difference between people that actually care about God and the people that don't. Like them manhole covers expensive as hell, man. Hope y'all really understand that. But uh, yeah, that's it. That's all we have for today. Let me get back to the big screen. I pray y'all was edified, man. Hopefully this wasn't too bad on this first live on the righteous reaction. It wasn't close to like this. Um, you know, the way we did it, this one through the whole uh, stream yard. And like I said, it's the first time of uh, getting it in. So, you know, I hope it wasn't too bad. Hope y'all was edified. Uh, y'all hit the like button and all that. If y'all like the video, share it to the people that need to be edified. You know what I'm saying? Help them out. Let them know, hey, it's wicked out here, man. We got to return to God. It's that time. He about to return. And we ain't got it together, man. He going to put something on our behind. And we ain't trying to be in that line. Real talk. You ain't trying to be in that line watching all the way at the front. Oh, Lord, look how he getting done. And you just stand in line waiting your turn to get your behind. Straight toe up and put in chains. We're giving you the opportunity to repent, man. We're trying to show you the difference between right and wrong. So at that day, you don't have no excuse. You be able to say, yeah, I knew what to do. And I was tricked. I deserved to be in his line. So hopefully, again, hopefully y'all got here to find. Y'all want to repent and do right. Y'all can contact us at any time. Uh, my, my email is Judah Apollos Israel at gmail.com and of course y'all can hit us in the comment section and all that you know if y'all want to help us out we got big land we got a lot of animals to feed and you know we're doing this off grid thing we 
looking for more people that's trying to do the same thing and follow the laws of God. So y'all see the cash app down at the bottom. Y'all hit that up. It will be very much appreciated. Very much appreciated. Till next time, we'll get at y'all, man. Shalom.